داشتم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم الحمد لله رب العالمین و الصلاة و السلام على سیدنا و نبینا ابلقاسم المصطفى محمد و على آله الاطیبین الاطهرین المنتجبین سیما علی امیر المؤمنین و صدیقة الطاهرة سیدة نساء العالمین و الحسن و الحسین سبت الرحمت و امام الهدى Fatimah and Zahra, may peace be upon all of them, may peace be upon Ali, son of Hussain, Muhammad, son of Ali, Jafar, the son of Muhammad, may peace be upon all of the family of the Prophet. May peace be upon all of the Muslims and those who protect the weak, may peace be upon the faithful. بوسیکم عباد الله به تقوی الله بار دیگر همه شما برادران و خواهران عزیز را و خودم را One more time I would recommend all of you brothers and sisters and myself to divine piety For a few moments I would like to speak about the developments uh, happening in Tunisia and in Egypt developments unfolding there These incidents are really important there was, this is, uh, let's call it an earthquake. If the people of Egypt, with the blessing and assistance of God, if they are able to push this through and move it forward, then what will happen to the U.S. policies in that region will be an irreparable defeat for the U.S. Today, more than, let's say, even the officials that have fled from Tunisia or Egypt, more than those officials, even Israelis, are, Israeli officials are more concerned. The Zionist enemies are concerned more than anyone else. They are aware that if Egypt ceases its alliance with them, and if it assumes its real status, what great happening will take place in the region? These are the, what was uh, uh, forecast by our late Imam. Those things will materialize. Therefore, these are these incidents are of paramount importance, and the analyses. Uh, across the world. They try to ignore the main cause for these uprisings. They make mention of economic and non-economic issues that of course are important. They have their own role, but the major driving force for this great popular movement, first in Tunisia and then its peak in Egypt, this was this feeling of humility and humiliation that the people feel because of the performance of their officials. People felt humiliated, they felt they were insulted. This inauspicious, uh, actually uh, unlike his name, uh, official in Egypt, he brought humiliation to the people of Egypt. Uh, let me first uh, mention a few points about Tunisia. In Tunisia, the fugitive president, Bin Ali, he was absolutely dependent on America. We have reports that he was dependent on the CIA. See how hard it is for a world nation to see that the head of a state of a nation, uh, so arrogant and so selfish president that he was, he was highly 
arrogant and selfish. He was actually officially acting as a servant of the U.S. and puppet, and for years he served them, and strongly he resisted issues of the people, especially he took measures against the religion. In Tunisia, that's a Muslim country, it has a high record, Islamic record, and there were great Islamic scholars in the Islamic civilization, they emanated from Tunisia. In such a country, people during the rule of Ben Ali, if they wanted to go to mosques, they needed to have special IDs. They needed to have permits to go to mosques. It was issued by the government. Not everyone was issued those cards and permits. To go to a mosque, you were not allowed to go. You were not allowed to hold uh, prayers, in the, even individually, let alone congregational prayers. Wearing of hijab was officially banned. Then one major incentive of the people was their demands for Islam. So you saw as soon as this traitor fled the country, and the situation was resolved, then uh, university students, girls, went to universities observing the Islamic hijab. This shows the deep incentive which is of Islamic nature. This is what Western analysts want to hide. They want to push it under carpet. Another incentive is dependence on the U.S. This is important for Americans do not want this to be mentioned, that the major, the reason for uh, the uprising of people of Tunisia and then later on the Columbus you can see in Egypt. The main reason is dependence. This is the very fact on the ground. Of course, in Tunisia there was a superficial and cosmetic change. He fled, but his administration is in power. We hope that Tunisian people will try to pay attention to the situation so that, God forbid, enemy would be able to deceive them. Now, as for Egypt, Egypt is a really important country. If I should first mention a few points. Egypt is the first Islamic country that became familiar with Western culture. The first Islamic country in the 18th century late 18th century, that was when they started to get familiar with the Western culture, with the European culture. So it was the first of Islamic countries that got familiar with the European culture in late 18th century, and it was the first Islamic country that withstood that Western culture and actually came to realize its shortcomings and it resisted against it. Sayyid Jamal al-Din, the great, the man that sought Islamic Islam and he was a great struggler. The best place he found for his struggles was Egypt. His followers, Muhammad Abdu and others, they started these Islamic movements in Egypt. They're great scholars, political, cultural scholars. They were all prominent and they were seeking freedom. Egypt acted as the leader of the Arab world politically. Uh, for a long time, Arab countries uh, looked at Egypt and they followed Egypt. It was acting as a leader of the Arab world. Independence, seeking freedom in that country, was being demanded. Of course, there were not good opportunities for the, those people in Egypt, apart from a short period of time. Egypt was, uh, let's say, the first or, or the largest country that, together with Syria, when it came to the issue of Palestine, they entered war. Other Islamic countries, none of them, in the wars against Israel, none of them uh, 
took part in the wars against Israel. Egypt uses armies, people, it took all its support and fought Israel. Of course, they were not successful. One of them in 1967, one of them is 1973. This is Egypt, so it was a shelter actually for Palestinians or maybe even for a large number of revolutionary elements from other countries. They looked upon Egypt like this, they would go to Egypt and base their activities there. Such a country, for 30 years, it is in the hands of a person who is not only seeking freedom, he's antagonistic toward freedom. Is not only against Zionists, but he's following and he's a collaborator and he's being kind of trusted and serving the interests of the Zionists. A country where one day was bearing the flag of anti-Zionist campaign and it was an example and hope inspiring for a whole Arab world, then this country, the situation turned in such a way that Israelis and the Zionist enemies actually, in all their anti-Palestinian activities, they relied on the assistance of Mr. Mubarak, he helped them in the war on Gaza. If Hosni Mubarak hadn't helped the Israelis, they would never be able to siege Gaza. For four years they have been under siege in Gaza. In the 22-day war, two years ago, men, women, children, in Gaza, they came under the fire of Israel, they got, they lost their lives, their homes were destroyed, and they did not allow other uh, aid caravans, not from Egypt, but from elsewhere, they did not allow aid caravans from elsewhere, they wanted to go through Egypt, like the caravan from Iran, they wanted to go get their assistance to the Gazans. Egypt did not allow that, that Mr. Hosni Mubarak didn't allow this actually. This was the situation in Egypt, and this people in Egypt decided they, they had enough in order to hmm, because of the support of the present administration in Egypt for Israel and because it was following in the footsteps of Israel and fully full obedience to the US they feel that they are humiliated so the major this is the major reason for their movement and now they are Muslim people they start from Friday prayers they start from their movements from mosques and they chant slogans of Allah Akbar God is great these are religious slogans being chanted in Egypt and the strongest struggling movement is the Islamic movement over there and now they want to remove this feeling of humiliation this is the major reason. Western world does not allow this. They don't want to see this analysis spread and be spoken about among world circles. They always refer to economic issues. Of course, economic problems and woes are a problem, but the servitude of a person like Hosni Mubarak toward America never allowed, never pushed Egypt even one step toward economic flourish. Forty percent of the people of Egypt, the more than nearly 80 million people, 40 percent are below poverty line. Even in Cairo, the capital city, based on uh, tangible reports that I have, uh, I have heard up to two, three million people, but we know that several thousands of uh, people in Cairo, they live in graveyards out of poverty. They have no homes. They take shelter at cemeteries. This is such a situation, situation of life over there. It's people are 
a problem with their subsistence. That means America, for this servitude, they didn't even reward Mubarak for this servitude. And today they are not rewarding him either. Every hour that passes, the moment he flees Egypt, Mubarak should know that the first door that will be closed will be the doors of America. They won't allow him in. Like they never allowed Ben Ali from Tunisia, like they never allowed Mohammed Reza from Iran. This is how they are. These people who are their, whose hearts are beating for serving the interests of America, they should open their eyes and see these instances. These are devils. In uh, among the fourth Imam prayer book, where he says that 